became an entrepreneur, setting up that project with Herminus. He's an excellent professional. Jorge, whenever you want. Thank you very much, Roman, for that brief introduction. And as Roman said, I've devoted my time, basically 20 years, to working for different companies, always focusing on security solutions, uh, focusing on protecting information systems in general. I started on the dark side, developing exploits, buffer overflows, and things like that. But I am now on the uh, good side, so to say. In fact, I'm uh, working for Capgemini right now. And obviously, I would like to thank you for your presence here today. And obviously, I would like to thank the organizers at RootedCon for inviting me along and giving me a chance to talk about this. Something we shouldn't really tackle at RootedCon. I think RootedCon should focus on the sophisticated new techniques on penetration attacks and elaborated matters. As you can see on the agenda, we'll be talking about rubbish, bullshit, stupid things that have to do with uh, software and hardware vendors. The guys that do their best to try and convince us to buy their products with the terms and conditions that they impose on us, machine learning, threat intelligence, big data, applied to security, and so on and so forth. When you take a look at the scenario we're facing and you think about the baddies, we tend to overlook the fact that some of the really bad ones are some technology vendors which behave in a really neg negligent way and put us in a really difficult situation. I will not try to tackle absolutely everything. I've gone back four months. I've selected a number of categories which I believe are particularly relevant. And I'll give you an overview. I'm not here to criticize. I'm not here to say that no one has the right to make mistakes. I think we all have the right to be wrong. But I also think that vendors must apply me whatever measures are needed, especially when those vendors go beyond the world of digital and they get into our own lives. I'm talking specifically about IoT, the Internet of Things. When doing so, when moving into other realms, I think they should make an effort to try and ensure that they have the necessary measures in place. So I'll be talking about what we can do as a society, what we can do as a community. I'll be talking also about an initiative that I am supporting to see what your opinion is about that. Obviously, I will not give you every single detail about everything. So let's keep moving. Category number one, too big to fail. It is the type of technology which is applied in many different layers of our daily lives. In this case, this is a hardware vendor, very well known, probably one of the largest ones, well, for sure one of the largest ones. They decided to install a recognized uh, certification authority with a private key as part of the browser and part of the uh, certificate repository in the computer, which is um, a stupid thing to do, basically, a very stupid thing to do. The funny thing is to when we took a look at, when we take a look at the timeline, you know that we had a problem with Lenovo in January of 2015. This vendor we're talking about published um, a note in their website. They said, if you're worried about Superfish, trust us, because we carry out security audits. We're very careful. We never install bloatware in our equipment. Well, that was February of last year. Someone within the company said, oh, well, this thing from Lenovo is a very good idea. Let's implement it. So that was August last year, where we had that problem that was discovered finally in November. By the way, with malware techniques in place, apart from installing a certificate with a private key that everyone has for anything, for debugging, for email, for 
anything you could do. If any experienced user decided to delete the certificate, a demon would take care of introducing the certificate again in the system. So the problem I see with this case is not just that a major ben vendor makes such a big mistake. The main problem is that this vendor is selling tens of thousands of computers everywhere, and all of them have that big mistake in the system. Then we have the uh, world of IOP, one of the main problems we will have in the future. In December of last year, you've probably heard about some embedded IoT devices that were present in more than 4,000 products, and that means in millions of physical devices throughout the world. Sharing the private keys for SSH, when you start producing, yeah, it's a nice thing to say that you're including an SSH key, but if they're not different from each other, anyone will be able to intercept the traffic from those devices throughout the world, millions of them. Then we move on to the second category, one where we have seen a large amount of problems. If you're wandering around and you see a policeman, you feel that you will be safer because there's a police uh, officer nearby. So when you install security software, you f might be inclined to think that you can feel safer. Some of us believe that it is rather the opposite because the attack surface is extended. We cannot assume, we cannot take for granted that because we're installing an antivirus, we will have um, a very solid protection system in place because sometimes problems happen, big problems happen. This is the red vendor. I decided to call it the red vendor. They had this program. This application for uh, password protection, one of those applications you use to store all of your passwords. You just have a master key. By inputting the master key, you have access to all of your passwords. What the vendor did was to use an API, a local host, with HTTP RTC, which is a really safe protocol, as we all know, an unsecured API was in place allowing anyone to execute code without proper authorization. I'm showing you the code. Accessing localhost to the port where the service is running. So execute the calculator or run this command, whatever. You, you can die laughing. Take a look at the analyst from Google telling the vendor about the vulnerability and the response from the vendor. The vendor applies patch after patch. Oh, the calculator, you cannot run it anymore because we've patched it. Yeah, but I can run everything else. Well, you cannot run the uh, calculator. Yeah, OK, I cannot run the calculator, but I can have an ac clear access to the database where all the passwords are stored from localhost. So I don't care that you're stopping my access to the calculator until a the time comes when the analyst from Google gives up and says, OK, I don't care. You've got more than 70 APIs. It's up to you, but I think it's wrong. This is like an additional component. It was installed by default. In theory, it offered maximum security to users because it was installed alongside with the antivirus. These are two examples, but there are others. There's another one which only recently provided an authorized access through the administration console. As Roman said, that administration console could be used by many major corporations. That console can be used by any user. DGCP slash, DGCP slash, DGCP slash, and there you go, straight into the system as an administrator accessing every single console with privileges to run commands and stop the antivirus for any user in the organization. This was a, an error, an injection error. In my opinion, code injection errors should be a thing of the past, especially if we talk about large corporations, because they can be uh, detected 
beforehand and stopped. They shouldn't exist, in short. There's another one, which is not that common in Spain, but I've heard about partners talking about this. They would install something called GitBy with the antivirus. This GitBy was an MVC server without a password. You know what a VNC server can be without a password. This is commercially available software that is, in theory, sold to protect users from attacks. I'm sure that most of you have seen the uh, film, The Revenant, this bear attacking Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, th this is the digital equivalent of the film. We've seen uh, a huge campaign over Christmas because of toys, because of IoT. I've decided to focus on two or three toys only, just to give you an idea of what is happening, to give you an idea of what manufacturers are doing, so that we can have your feedback about whether this can be avoided or not. Are they doing this on purpose? I don't really understand why people are so interested in installing um, a web camera on a teddy bear. Why should this be part of your commercial strategy? Anyway, what I don't understand is that there's no security measures implemented when installing this. So this was given to a security analyst as a gift who discovered in only two days that there was a USB port with an Android system embedded where a debug shell could be run so the behavior of the toy could be modified completely someone could manipulate this teddy bear to make it do whatever they wanted but the big problem was authentication AAA authentication authority authority and access someone in the manufacturer probably said AAA what is this this is too many A's let, let us just do one A Authentication. Once you authenticate yourself, that's it. You can do anything. So this is what I did. So as soon as you are a registered user into the system, you can access the entire list of customers with the list of profiles of the children that are using the teddy bears. You can access the system and find out when the teddy bear is being used in real time. And you can associate, modify profiles, anything you like. By the way, this is not a any tacky Chinese vendor out there. It is one of the leading manufacturers. And this poor girl, by the way, when it was made public that this doll would have a Wi-Fi connection and use a loudspeaker, this is amazing. I call it a, an espionage device because parents can see what the children talk about with the toy. Big problems. There was quite a controversy about this related to privacy. The fact that um, no security was implemented. And the funny thing is that the initial press release was launched in February of 2015. The door came out in October, November of that year. So it was quite a few months between the press release and the coming to the market of the toy. And yet, we had lots of problems with the use of obsolete cryptographic measures, apart from many other things, like, for example, by accessing the mobile application, which is completely unsecured. You can access the audio file without proper authorization. You can connect to any Wi-Fi network called Barbie. And then I have my favorite. This is another leading vendor in, in learning technologies for children through toys. This is my favorite, my absolute favorite. When I think about negligent behavior, this is what comes to my mind. For example, SQL code injection. These guys were selling how many? They had five million profiles for the parents with more than six million profiles for children. They were not using SSL. There was no, there was no, uh, cryptography added to it there was no security measures whatsoever so I could access the system and get the passwords for everyone the secret questions were in were flat uh, files with text you could get access to all the responses in SQL 
there's no older vulnerability than this one. But then they, they wouldn't use SSL, they wouldn't use anything to apply security to this. I will not, I haven't seen this yet. You've probably seen it already. But the, the Japanese have their toilets connected using YouTube. Quite a funny thing. I'm going to show it. Okay, I cannot play the video, which is a good thing. Not very pleasant. So underneath the WC, there is a, it's like a spear that throws water upwards. So instead of having buttons on the wall, it seems that it's better to get a stream of water uh, going to your backside, whatever. I will not give you your details. And there's even a mobile application that allows you to uh, determine when you use the uh, toilet and what comes out of it. I'm only using this to illustrate the extent to which the Internet of Things is becoming a part of our lives and the reasons why I believe that we need additional regulations in place as soon as possible. So first, what do we need to do as a community? This is an open-ended question, really. This is getting bigger and bigger. Unless measures are implemented, I don't know to what extent this will have an impact on us as a society. Obviously, there is a, an incredible lack of awareness on the side of vendors. These are vendors that have never had to do with cybersecurity in the past. So the main goal we should have in mind is to know how to include security, cyber security in the equation for these guys, for the executives running these companies. And the easiest thing to do is to start with regulation, proper regulation. Is that a solution? To be honest, I don't know. Regulation is something made by humans and by politicians. So I don't know about its effectiveness. It's faulty, it's flawed by design. We do have a lot of regulations for security. When there's no personal leaders involved, I don't know about connected cars, but they're very reactive. Vendors are very reactive. They only react when there are problems. I think we should really make an effort to define a number of critical technologies. We have legislation about protection of critical infrastructures. We should have regulations on critical technologies, whatever is used for the Internet of Things, because we cannot leave this to chance. We cannot forget about the details and wait until things happen. We need to talk to vendors and make them aware of the risks we are facing. If you have been reading the press recently, and you have been listening to our politicians in Spain, in, in, in Parliament, and about the rubbish they've been talking about for, during these days. I don't trust politicians myself too much, but they seem to move at a different speed from the rest of humans. We have the speed of the internet, and the speed at which vendors want to uh, take their products to market. And then we have the speed at which politicians move in, in passing new regulations, new legislation. Has it been two, three years talking about new regulations on, on, on new technologies? It was first a European directive, then there was a transposal, then we will have the Spanish law. So in five years from now, can you imagine how many things will be connected to the Internet of Things? Yesterday, we were talking about sexual devices that are interconnected. And I was a bit scared, because it's a scary thing. The very truth is, I could have ended up being like this. And uh, OK, I could have been given a very Spanish Bay uh, stylish uh, uh, rooted thing. I'm blaming the politicians for everybody, and the rest of the human world is OK. But uh, I, I wanted to, to, to show you around us, we as a community, as a community as a whole, can we find a solution for a problem that consumers are getting through? And in, if in this way, as a security community, we can benefit from uh, uh, being able to give in this service. So this happens, uh, the necessity of implanting a type of uh, trustworthy uh, ceiling, uh, especially for 
IoT uh, issues, giving security and comfort uh, the consumers about, oh, I'm buying something, uh, energy efficiency th um, uh, labels when I'm buying a washing machine. Of course, the same applies when you are buying an interconnected device. The security and safety 100%. We we're not talking about uh, the criteria ba criteria based certifications. If we want to create a seal, an effective seal, we cannot uh, uh, go this way because some manufacturers will give a thought to that. So we need to give a minimum set of measures for uh, being in one year time from now in Ridicon and, and checking out what uh, manufacturer has been the seal as well. So in the very end, this uh, trustworthy seal could it, could it be launched by a company. I can launch uh, the Tag Mini seal for security uh, confidence in, on the Internet of the Things that this would be uh, senseless. Uh, the consumers would be as lost as uh, they're now. So this should be uh, led by some kind of institution, independent institution. I will tell that ISM firm in Spain with the the uh, Mobility uh, Studies Center, Francisco Lazaro, the manager, will evaluate and check uh, if we firstly can define this uh, trustworthy confidence seal, what the, requir the requirements would be. This seal has to be open and in which uh, everybody can participate in the issuance of these seals in such a way that I can see it in a way the community, the general community, the general security and safety community can benefit from by meeting specific uh, requirements and being able to certify the minimum security requirements for these products. I do think that it is uh, crystal clear that we should be needing s different types of proofs depending on the, the Internet of Things we are because it's such a big and ample spectrum with so many ramifications. But there are some specific aspects. Very firstly, the, which has been the level of cybersecurity design implemented by a manufacturer? What are the um, network base uh, cybersecurity, you need to scan uh, the, 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 the ports. There are simple simple things to be done. Uh, application security, mobile embedded uh, uh, issues, identity management, uh, something relevant for me, which is the, the physical tampering by seeing that devices contain some specific uh, protection against the the device being tampered, manipulated from from abroad, or from outsides. Um, we need to come um, a limited to expiry date. We cannot issue uh, a certificate for life. So. Any manufacturer, any manufacturer having this seal in such a way should be compromised and committed to during the span time and the shelf life of the products uh, uh, in the face of uh, security errors on um, failures. When you're talking about, for instance, about a fridge, does not uh, last as long as uh, PC. A fridge can last for 25 years. Inter uh, interconnected fridge, uh, regret regrettably, in all mm, fridges will be connected. So the manufacturer has to uh, take on the commitment to correcting these problems. This is it. I do think that there is some uh, free time for us to, to, to pose questions. Please tell me about what do you think about this initiative? And should you have any questions about the, the, the things I'm telling you, um, I will please to answer back. Thank you. Please stand up in order to uh, pose your questions uh, for, the vi for visibility reasons. Rooted Khan collaborates with the um, IMS uh, forum within the same um, group, and Raul Silas belongs to this group, and we'll uh, team, up, team up with him uh, in this line with the uh, Ramos security pr pr project. Uh, what happens um, regarding this? I, I talked with uh, Antonio regarding this issue. It's very true that Antonio has a neutral character. Uh, this has to be led by an institution, uh, more independent institution rather than a um, beneficial uh, player. 
you are uh, please you, the, the stop scanning the the, 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 the the whole thing because you are sweeping around and you are distorting the the mics please don't sweep around this fact spectrum because this will be coming in distorted background noise for the interpreters like I said before, we talk about the shell life, the span life. What do you make of it? Manufacturers should be asked about the the program or schedule obsolescence. For some, is a urban legend. For others, a reality. Uh, regarding cybersecurity issues, when they fitting these things in our places and if they want to schedule the obsolescence, I can do it. The, the whole uh, device breaks down. Do you know how many uh, toys, how many of you are uh, father and mother, how many toys in vaults and chess, do you imagine an IP uh, address for these IPs and games, then their obsolescence will last for 15 years. There should be an, uh, an ability for the father to, to correct this, this uh, vulnerability. Some apparatuses and devices take uh, and stop uh, being updated in three years. It will be subject to the, the product guide for life within the fact that the uh, law specifies certain uh, guarantees that should be covering the cybersecurity issues? It's a very good question for you to, to help me. Next question, please. Uh, at the back, so many folks at the back, please stand that for us to see you properly. There's somebody over here. I'm a, m a member, of, a fellow of uh, with Antonio Ramos in eye security. Uh, my question is the, the question uh, Roman posed to you before. The, are you familiar with our project regarding the independence? An organization, a private organization, may be as uh, independent as. Uh, organization where their fellow members establish the rules for them to give these uh, guarantee seals. So I encourage you to um, have a pay a visit to iSecurity. I to thank you for your question, my friend. At this moment in time, there is no initiative. I talk about this before. I talk uh, to uh, Antonio before. I, if Elisa thought about something there in this line, there is no initiative in this regard. It comes to me. There are so many models. If Elite would have a model that and they, they told me that they have been working for the Cyber National Security Institute for certifying industrial issues, and we can um, give or take things from them and mutually intershare for them the certifying uh, institutions and entities to, to use. I would like this, this kind of seals should not be restricted to companies, and there should be a heritage and some assets for the whole hacker cybersecurity community because it's a way f um, for them to monetize all their knowledge and, and in some way to give and render an essential service for the community, which is good per se. Uh, please use a microphone. Sir, we cannot hear the question. Please, the, the microphone is not in use. The microphone is not in use. The idea is to extend, logically speaking, to uh, uh, the very same companies, qualified plus those other companies wanting to participate in the definition of the model should have their own voice, have a say about this. For us, it's much better to have a series of inputs rather than working on our own um, uh, and reading through all uh, the regulations. Everyone wanting, who wants to participate is kindly invited to do so. My name is Manuel. My name is Manuel. Very first, the reflections and reflections re regarding the, the well-known manufacturers. There is a big mutation. We don't know they are what they are selling us regarding cybersecurity. Every um, well-known manufacturer is selling us uh, cybersecurity regarding. Um, 
certifications is a good idea to put on a um, safe and secure seal, not a um, copyable um, and paste and pasted uh, seal sent to the United States to the United Kingdom, from the United Kingdom back to Spain, and with then with the, the label European Union. Any device I'm going to buy to China is going to take uh, two months to reach myself. And this, uh, this applies to the other certificates. If you, if you don't implement uh, security on this label, on this seal uh, made by the national um, stamping and coin and, and, and mint institution. And the key to success here is controlling the frontiers, the boundaries. If we don't control what is coming through our the customs in our airports, many things that can may cause two, five, three euros, uh, IoT uh, complex biases, Will be be will be so expensively. So um, since we are subject to the European Union rules, and ESA, this institution having the, the cybersecurity strategy should be the uh, reference. Thank you. It may be you are you're going one step forward when you're talking about the the security for labels and seals. In reality, the idea I have in my head is to find something that uh, for the toys uh, associations of manufacturers may give uh, consumers a, um, a guideline about what we are buying. You're right when you're talking about the frontiers and boundaries is a big issue. Uh, we, we can be sitting to see the regulation of these from a European view point, especially connected to the Internet of the Things. But my, my, be, my view is that the, we have a, a warring situation uh, within two years' time when we are starting to um, uh, regulate this specifically. This is going to be a total chaos. Chaos. A question uh, up the back. I do agree with you that this is going to be a chaos, but if we put a sticker that which is easily copyable and replicable, what, is, what happens with the, the white label Chinese made toys, we, we are going working for nothing. But in, in notice that we are talking about a moment which is absolutely incipient beginning. You're talking about the physical um, safety for the label. and. Uh, I wish we could reach the point which uh, everybody, um, this is not working. We can, I wish we could reach a point where we have the implemented uh, seal and label, and we should not be worried about the, the falsification. This, um, let's try to, to get an agreement, all the, the players and in, in manufacturers in the industry, in the necessity of uh, having this uh, security uh, um, things, and then, then we'll be worried um, about the, the security of the the, the label. Of course, you have a part of, you have. We are partially right about this. Thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It's the question. Don't you think that by establishing a seal or a uh, label would not be r better for the people to demand this, the, the the label? For, for me to explain this to my woman is or to my wife is is, is difficult. Would, we should go further down to the base for the people to demand, for the folks to demand the the, the, the label. People need need to be aware for something to, to work. Firstly, this does not take off the necessity of awareness from the population. The problem stems from the fact that no matter how much awareness, and there are so many uh, institutional efforts doing a, a good job. It's a, a long-term job about uh, raising awareness for the population the using of new technologies. When a user uh, totally where goes to the, the, the go to the, sh the shop connects on Amazon to buy a, a game or a toy. This consumer does not know what an M5 is. They don't. He doesn't need it. He wants to buy a teddy bear. Period. What can we give him? We we got we got our user uh, aware. Some users are aware, but they cannot discriminate some products uh, with good cybersecurity practices from others. Thank you. You're welcome. 
uh, aligning with what we said before about the, the, the erasing awareness, the user, not, not the, the, the home user, the home users are comfortable. Uh, they're, they're, if they're feeling good at or their ignorance, may the solution not going through the fact that by being living to places, households where everything is interconnected, users should be certifying in real time the, secu the, the cyber security of their devices. Rather than having a physical label that you can uh, stick on the, the, the box of the package, you should be able to connect your device in an easy, convenient, and handy way by checking and scanning your the whole uh, equipment and knowing that the, the washing machine or their toy is totally uh, secure and, and safe. Oh, you're picturing me a theor theoretical panorama. I would like to to, 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 to put in that into reality. Myself being a consultant, a technician I am, um, knowing that the, the whole complexity and the, the, the communication uh, between sensors, the physical security of devices, the implementations inside the applications, and what's more, other additional players moving everything up to the cloud with, with um, different brand new uh, phone uh, devices. And, and it's like the, the CIS. The, 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 you need a lantern, a flashlight of infrared being security people. And to, but I cannot visualize this. Can, this is a real scenario, sorry. In some cases, this can only be applicable to the network security. Don't you think that it should be important for us to have um, a punishment regime re in reality? You should be hitting by a stick very strongly when you make mistakes. Of course, I said before, I spell it out. I spell it out. I express my real um, lack of confidence in legisl legislators. The only way to raise awareness among uh, manufacturers is by finding them. Put um, and. They're talking about um, a 20 million fine years in their um, turnover um, average. So now the, the member of the board of directors are arcing their eyebrows because of the fines they are going to be uh, imposed. So sometimes uh, they're waiting for being fine rather than to act on real facts. So the operator, the legislator should be uh, acting by default by preventing and sanctioning these negligences. Um, manufacturers should be have clear that in this specific case, 5 million registers to be uh, punished, which is um, a real punishment. If you, the manufacturers, they are um, uploading uh, websites with, um, with a lot of failures and then they have the, their home works done in cybersecurity, it will be punished by, and we, can prevent these problems. It's not about having a website uh, stealing our data from us. It's, it's the, the fact is these bad websites are moving into and sticking stick into their, their, our houses and homes. Security is a big issue. Last, last question, please. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. Um, regarding um, the, the issue of the impunity of companies, we're talking about um, industrial sales, contamination, uh, triggering debts. The, the seal, the label per se, will not resolve the problem. If the company is not losing, if the manufacturer is not losing by doing the wrong things, if there is, uh, there will be always um, um, a number of not implementing cyber security because it's, um, it's cheaper. The, the label the, is a proposal that is complement, is complement of the previous things having to do with the regulation. If we don't have regulation, for instance, regarding toys, there is a toys-based uh, security regulation, but they don't mention anything about cybersecurity at all, and they won't help in many years to come. Wrap, to wrap up, the, the label helps, nonetheless helps uh, being having manufacturers aware about this. If we are able to, to raise awareness among citizens about looking for labels, and the manufacturer is, is, is realizes that if they're if this if they don't get some uh, recognition, some security, they will be losing sales. If we are reaching this, we'll be able to put on the table of the member of director uh, that cybersecurity is a priority per se. That's what you, what you are looking for. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jorge.